Uh, Temple Ashaju is now back and roaring. Let's get him across to uh, this uh, conversation. Temple, good morning. Now we got you loud and clear. <laughs> Good morning, Boston. Yeah, good good morning there. I love the early morning hours. I love the early morning hours on the floor, at the floor of the exchange. Very quiet and all of that. Sure. Folks are coming in in, yeah. in few numbers, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when you were wrapping up yeah, Friday sure. last week... I mean, they're coming in to look at where to put them money. Yes. But, but yeah. you, you, when, when you, you were wrapping up last week, it was all about the earnings coming through. Uh, they'll all be exciting. Are uh, the brokers mm -hmm. or traders talking about some of these numbers? What have you been hearing from them? <laughs> well, not all the numbers are exciting. As a matter of fact, uh, they were mixed, and that's why uh, we saw the level of performance, which was negative, that we saw last week. Uh, because, again, quite a number of them that investors or traders here had actually expected to uh, churn out some positive numbers they didn't turn out to be positive. Instead, they were negative. They had some impairment charges, some kind of deductions, and all of that. It impacted the, ne the banking sectors and the consumer goods sectors, where we've seen a lot of those numbers numbers coming in more uh, we've seen some uh, negative uh, uh, numbers you know in a lot of those financial statements and that didn't really really excite investors and traders here on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange Boston yes okay so, so let's just uh, start to drill down on some of them let's start with the banks let's start with what is sweet and really sweet and that is Unity Bank <laughs> Yeah, Unity Bank, very, very surprising, but of course it's exciting to a lot of uh, traders and perhaps that is, these numbers will begin to change the perception of a lot of investors uh, about that particular company going forward. Why? Because they're back in profit. Uh, if you look at the top line, it's very, very positive at 31 billion naira compared to uh, 26.12 billion naira, which they did for this period uh, last year, 2018, when they were so much uh, neck deep in challenges. So this period, gross income was up by 20 percent if you look at the interest income as well that is very very positive as well it rose by some 28 percent to 26 billion naira interest expense uh, was up though by some 46 uh, 42 percent uh, that's all the way from 10 billion naira for 2018 nine months to 15 billion naira for this period and the fees and commission is something that also aided the performance uh, that was up to 1.38 billion naira up some 26 percent uh, if you do the comparison with the base year period. So, so that's, that's uh, really, really positive, even though we know that uh, uh, net expenses, uh, uh, interest expenses was also there, you know, but it's all positive, uh, given what we also saw around the bottom line, uh, which is very, very, which has moved down to the uh, billion uh, uh, Naira mark, all the way from uh, uh, 643 million Naira for the profit before tax, and just 600 million Naira declared in profit uh, for this time uh, uh, last year when they actually released their nine months uh, numbers. Now we have the profit of the tax of 1.48 billion naira. This is something worth celebrating. The only concern that traders have right now is the fact that uh, the CBN has now banned some, uh, you know, uh, 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 entities, some institutions from uh, the open market operations. And this is something that has contributed to the fees and commissions uh, of the, their fees and commission to the profits of this uh, particular bank at this point in time. So the question is, will you Unity Bank be able to uh, partake in the Omo, Omo, Omo auctions going forward so that they can also get some uh, kind of revenue because again uh, there are so many demands in, in town in, in terms of what the CBN, the regulator is you know putting a lot, a lot of these banks asking them to get their LDR up to 60% and all of that so will they be able to uh, uh, get all of this done that's the concern of traders on the floor here Yes, uh, Tempo, quite uh, looking to some of these numbers. Again, what you see in Unity Bank and which I've seen across a number of other banks, including uh, Zenit Bank, which came in a bit earlier last week, was that their operating expenses, they are cutting down very rapidly yeah. on this. And I think this is the time. Uh, this mm. is one good one line item yeah. across the banks that is beginning to show for most of them, perhaps with the exception of GT Bank that we've seen so yeah. far, that they are trying to, they're getting their operating expenses yeah. uh, are down. For example, Unity Bank is reporting uh, about the total operating expenses now and 10 percent other operating expenses also down 11 percent in the period under review that looks like some good numbers and i think i like the earnings per share the bottom line there for the earnings per share is 18.38 
cover, which is much better than 8.43 years, which more than was was reported. But let's push Unity Bank, which is a, a small cap, what you can call a second tier uh, uh, a bank here. You, let's put it back down and just go to first tier. Talk yeah. about uh, 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 Stambic Bank, uh, Stambic IBTC Holdings, which is a holding company uh, for, for this one. What did you see in the numbers over the weekend? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's quite impressive as well, especially given the fact that they had a right back of just 90 million naira compared to 4.1 billion naira uh, that they did in 2018. That was the uh, particular uh, uh, line item now that impacted on their profit, the bottom line for this bottom line for this period. Because if you look at the PBT, uh, the, the, the the, the, the profit before tax is showing 69 billion naira in terms of the group numbers there. Uh, if you look at the bank segment, it's very, very positive. So for the for the group, it's 69 billion naira compared to 70 billion naira, which is a marginal uh, difference there. If you look at the profit of the tax as well, for the group, you have 55.5 billion naira uh, compared to 59.7 billion naira. Uh, what impacted this uh, disparity is basically this uh, particular line item of right back where some uh, 90 million naira uh, was written back as opposed to 4.1 billion naira. Look at the uh, banking side of the numbers. It was positive. Uh, profit of the tax is 30 billion naira as opposed to uh, 17 billion naira for 2018. Now, if we move further to the uh, top line, uh, which is where we should have started from, the gross earnings is very, very positive. 176 billion naira uh, versus 168 billion naira. Uh, Non-interest income, uh, we saw that also. It's 1 billion naira compared to 79 billion. And in Interest expense was actually up as well. This is something that also impacted on the uh, numbers a bit uh, negatively, but not too much. So if you look at it overall, you just say this is really, really uh, uh, impressive. Uh, interest expense was up by some 9.9 percent, while we see interest income uh, growing at some 3.5 uh, percent. If you look at that, it's it's still uh, really, really positive. A lot of uh, the metrics there, if you check critically, they are really positive, and investors are have continued to be bullish and stand big IB to say, especially with the fact that uh, it's a major institution that continues to invest in, uh, you know, the retail space and, of course, a whole lot of, they do a whole lot of investment banking, basically. That's what impresses investors, which is also why the, uh, the share price is still hovering around 35, 37 naira per share, Bosun. Uh, Temple, let's uh, chew very quickly to Access Bank before... Uh, we drop the banking uh, space uh, in terms of it, it, it looks like this corporate merger, the wedlock with uh, or the takeover of Diamond Bank, to put it more precisely, uh, uh, is, is paying off uh, decently uh, going by these numbers, at least by nine months that we're looking at right now from Access. <laughs> Well, uh, a lot of investors have checked that. They've actually been bullish on Access Bank way before now. I mean, if you compare the Access Bank to some of the pairs, uh, you know, that, uh, that recently joined the uh, main board of the stock exchange, investors have been uh, trading more on, uh, on, on Access Bank, and that's because uh, the, 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 the legacy debt that, they were, that came with the, uh, what you call the wedlock uh, with Diamond Bank, the SY Diamond Bank, has actually, been, uh, has actually paid off. Uh, because, again, they've been able to uh, recover some of those loans uh, with the backing of the central bank and of course I think some of the security operatives. So all of those strategies and recovering uh, those funds have been working and that's why they've been able to declare those numbers. Traders are trading more on Access Bank. They've been able to push up the numbers uh, beyond 6 Naira. It's now around 7 Naira plus. I do see this particular uh, uh, company uh, trading around 8 Naira more before the uh, close of the year, Bosun. Yes, these are the numbers that will take everyone to the end of December uh, of the year. So this is your nine months, unless anything else happens. Mm -hmm. Whatever all these banks or anywhere everyone is reporting, it's the final earning season for the year. Full year 2019 will be coming through next year. So these are the numbers that everyone will be paying attention to if sure. you want to do anything in the market between now and December. We're counting down the final 60 days of 2019, as it were. So let's talk about, let's get our bearings right. Let's Let's talk a little bit about Nigerian breweries. Uh, it looks like this brewing giant uh, is uh, yeah. uh, is a main rival. Guinness uh, turned out very disappointing numbers last week. Then Nigerian breweries is here, and the bottom line mm -hmm. is not looking fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
at all, at all, because again, it's been difficult for this particular company and not just this company alone, uh, a whole lot of others, uh, uh, players or operators in that space, the brewing back, the brewers market, uh, the brewers markets. It's been difficult for them to pass the cost of the excise duties, which is impacting on their operations and the cost of uh, sales and excise duty uh, payments to uh, levies, charges, fees, all of this that has been going to the federal government. It's been difficult for them to pass all of those burdens to their uh, consumers. Uh, that's a major concern for uh, these particular uh, companies, and that is what has impacted negatively on the uh, profits of uh, of uh, Nigerian breweries. Uh, the top line is very positive at 259 billion compared to 254 billion. But if you look at the excise duty, it's almost doubled, all the way from 16 billion naira to 24 billion naira. That's what the uh, nine-month numbers show. The cost of sale is all is, is mildly different, actually, 139 billion naira. But that excise duty is where the concern concern is. Uh, profit before tax is 17 billion. Uh, profit after tax is just 12.2 billion compared to 14.7 billion, uh, which is what they did for nine months 2018. Uh, cotton or quarter is also very, very negative. If you look at the earnings per share, it's just 153 kobo compared to 185 kobo. So all of this is not looking too good for Nigerian breweries. The share price is around 50 to 55 naira per share in the market, uh, which is what a lot of investors have been given could cold shoulder to. However, they surprised the investors, the shareholders, by paying, proposing a 50 kobo interim dividend for this period. But I should add this. Uh, I may be wrong, though, but the point is uh, I, I see this company actually coming up with a right issue sometimes next year. Why? Because International Brewery, a major contender in the space, has already proposed the right issue. I think that has even been approved by some of the shareholders at an extraordinary general meeting recently. So you continue to see some form of uh, capital raising uh, from all of these brewers you know, these breweries, uh, you know, going forward, because again, they need to find a way to show up their capital, they need to find a way to uh, manage the implications or the impact of all of this excise duty on their businesses. They may not be uh, uh, willing to pass up, pass the uh, burden of these uh, uh, excise duty to the consumers at this point, because again, this is going to change the price of the, of the beers, and that is going to be worrisome. So unless they come together, have a consensus to agree that, okay, for uh, the, this, this class of drinks or this class of beer, this is what we want to trade it at, this is what we want to sell it at. But that's going to be very, very difficult because I'm not too sure those uh, brewers really have uh, any form of association where they will be able, or a platform where they will be able to come together and have such a discussion on person. Maybe they're going to have it under the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria's umbrella, but again, if you talk about excise duties, uh, currently the, the, the brewers, the brewers, the IB, Guinness, Nigerian breweries uh, and others are the one feeling the heat. But the government is not done yet with the Excise duty. There is uh, excise duty coming with uh, coming on, on uh, what you call the uh, uh, carbonated drinks as well. Uh, you know them in the market. What you call soft drinks. Uh, there's an yeah, excise duty yeah. also coming Which through. Uh, uh, in. Yes, those ones are coming through as well. Uh, but unfortunately, we, uh, Coca-Cola is out of our market. 7-Up is out of our market as well. So we'll take a look at that another day. Yeah, but sticking with industrials, it doesn't look these numbers are good for them. Look at Cement Company of Northern Nigeria, which is based in Sokoto State. This is reporting earnings per share mm. from 319 kobo a year ago uh, to 67 kobo for the first nine months of this year. That is a deep dive, mm. if you ask me here. This is this is this is bad. You're right, Bozin, but top line is positive at 42.51 billion naira uh, compared to 19.57 billion naira. You know that I think it was about this period last year that they came up with a deal with Kal uh, Kalambina Cement, and of course we know that this particular company, Kalambina Cement, of course, has uh, a relationship with Boa, uh, Boa Cement and all that. So this uh, uh, synergy between CCNA and uh, Boa has probably, you know, brought about some uh, more of a cost of Operations, expenses, because if you look at the cost of sales this time, it's high, uh, 24 billion naira compared to just 13, uh, to 10 10.9 billion naira for the base year. So, uh, of course, they say to whom much is given, much is expected. Perhaps they are in, they're investing more uh, in, in, the, in the spread and in expansion and, of course, in uh, distribution of their products. Uh, of course, I know that they also target uh, other, other clients, you know, outside Nigeria, because again, as one of the executives of uh, uh, Bua said some times ago recently, uh, he said uh, it is actually almost cheaper 
to, to export your products out of Nigeria than to even distribute within the country here. So it looks like they've been uh, paying more attention to this particular uh, segment of the market in terms of distribution, in terms of exportation, and that is probably increasing the cost of sale and has probably uh, impacted negatively on their earnings per share at this point in time. However, uh, we know the bottom line is not too bad at 8.7 uh, billion naira uh, compared to 4.01 billion naira. Tempo, can we just wrap it up there? Thank you so much. Let's get, thank you so much, our business correspondent, uh, chewing over some of the earnings at the NSC.